Welcome, friends. Welcome back to the kitchen. Today, I have my friend Gage here from Sharp Knife Shop in Hamilton. Yes, sir. Pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for coming in. Yeah. Um, and so today, we're going to talk about Japanese knives. But first, tell me a little bit about yourself. How did you get into knives, and yep. how did you arrive at this point? So my uh, journey into knives started uh, in the kitchen. Um, right out of high school, I started uh, cooking professionally. Uh, my first real kitchen job, I call, I've had dishwashing jobs. Yes, yeah. Uh, but my re first real kitchen cooking job was at a restaurant called uh, Origin, which is... Uh, Claudio Priles. Now defunct, yes. Uh, Claudio Priles' old spot. So if you go back through our channel, you go back to like 2007, I did an interview with Claudio in, in that restaurant. and But now you see him on... Master Big Chef Master Canada. Chef, yeah. Um, yeah, he's doing really well there. Um, he. So that was a real kitchen. Like that's a real kitchen. That was a real kitchen. Yeah, everything from scratch. That was my first like scratch kitchen for sure. And I and I learned a ton. Um, um, not only just about food, but also about the importance of good tools. Right. So yeah. um, I was very lucky that. Um, everyone at that restaurant was very passionate about what they were doing and um, and precision and, and efficiency were, were key. Um, and with that uh, came a, a good sharp knife that was going to allow you to make those precise, accurate cuts and be efficient doing so as well. So, so now, you're, now you're selling those tools. Now I'm selling them, yes. Yeah. So th through my experiences in the kitchen and having used all of these knives, I've uh, sort of curated a, a selection of knives that I personally can, can stand behind. I've either used all of these knives or I've had friends in the industry use them previously. Okay. So let's talk about Japanese knives because they're completely different than European knives. They are. They're different in a number of different facets. So I would say the, the steel that's used, the, the way that they're made, um, the, the look and the feel are all completely different. Um, so we'll start. I'll start by talking about the the difference in steels. So okay. um, while a lot of Japanese makers are using stainless steels, uh, traditionally they would use carbon steel. Um, carbon steel is going to do a couple of things for you. It's going to give you better edge retention, um, and it's going to be much easier to sharpen. And then some people would argue that it has a better cutting feel. Okay. I personally am of the belief that that cutting feel and the ease of sharpening are kind of hand in hand. So um, if it's an easy steel to sharpen you're gonna get sharper and then it's gonna feel better when you're cutting with it but carbon steel so I have a carbon steel yes um, takes a lot more care it does uh, you have to be much more diligent when you're using it you, uh, you've got to you've got to wipe it clean right away you you've do got to dry it right Absolutely. away you've got to, yeah yeah um, it does uh, it, it can be a little bit tough at the beginning but it is a matter of, of, of building those those good habits so which you should have. Yes. You should, you should always be wiping and cleaning, no matter what it's made from. Absolutely. Right away. If it's a $5 knife, if it's a $5,000 knife, it should get wiped down immediately right. after you're yeah. using it. Um, you know, I was lucky to be, to be screamed at about that when I was in the <laughs> kitchen starting out. Yeah. Um, if my knife or my board or my station in general was uh, askew at all, uh, someone was going to let me know about it. So, um, yeah. The, once it, you know, I don't. I don't like to to tell people about the rust and the the maintenance to scare them, but just to make them aware of what could happen. What could happen? Yes. Um, once those habits are formed, it's going to be a very easy easy knife to take care of. So. Yep. Um, next, we'll talk about the the, the forging process. So. Um, all of the knives that I carry are, are hand forged, or if they're not hand forged, they're they're made in in small factories where they're either uh, roll forged or um, or stamped. Um, but everything is always sharpened by hand by and hand. finished okay. by hand. Um, so that's why I make the claim that they're all handmade. Some are hand forged, some are not. Um, the hand forging process or or the roll forging process. Um, makes the steel more dense um, and it makes it harder and therefore gives you better edge retention. So a, a German knife is stamped from, you know, generic stainless steel. Um, there's a time and a place for a German or, or a European knife, mm -hmm. uh, I still think. Like we affectionately refer to them as, and I'm sure you've heard this term before as well, uh, beaters. You always keep yeah. your, you know, your beater knife around when you got to like hack a lobster in half or do whatever with it. Um, you don't you don't want to worry about it getting damaged or whatever. That's the one you go with. I have a beater knife. Okay, let me, let's let, see it. Let me get it. Amazing, yeah. So this is my this is my beater knife. Oh yeah. I bought this probably when I was in grade nine. Okay. <laughs> it's in fantastic shape. So look at so, that. I mean it is not a good knife by any stretch of the imagination. It's it doesn't look like very nice steel. No. Uh, not a fantastic handle on it. 
no. But when it's sharp, um, I can hack away at stuff. And I don't have to, to worry. It does yeah. exactly what yeah. it's supposed to do. Yeah. yeah. So there is a place for... Absolutely. Yeah. And there's also a place for these. Yes. When you're trying to be very, very precise and, 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 and accurate with what you're doing, um, a good sharp knife um, is super important. And one that holds its edge a long time is, is important yeah, this, as well. Yeah, this, this does not hold its edge. No, long. right? So yeah. like that, 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 that kind of leads into the, the Rockwell scale conversation or, the, or yeah. the HRC abbreviation. If you've done any knife shopping before, you've probably seen the HRC abbreviation and maybe wondered what it means. Yep. So um, uh, like we talked about, a hand forged knife, um, um, more dense, harder. And the way they measure that is by um, taking the steel, they put it in this machine, they use a control load, they make a little indentation, they use a larger load, measure the difference, and that gives you a number. Um, generally, for, for uh, you know, German knives, they're going to come in around 50 two to 56 mm -hmm. um, and then most of what I carry is in the 60 and above range. I got a couple that kick around like the 59 sort okay. of range um, but that hardness is going to contribute to much better edge retention. Um, it does kind of lead to some other um, not issues, but but things you have to be careful with. So a harder steel is going to be more brittle, right? Yeah. So you yeah. do have to be a little bit more mindful of what you're doing and yeah. how you're using yep. it. Yep. Um, one of the big ones I see, um, aside from the obvious ones like trying to cut through bones or frozen foods or or yeah. any like hard nuts or candies or and stuff yep. like that, is uh, when people are using the the rocking motion, like this. Yeah. A lot of people have a tendency to sort of. Walk it. Walk it across. Yep. And with a with a stainless steel knife that's on the softer side, that's not a huge deal. When you're getting into like the really, really thin, like very hard, durable steels, it's going to cause issues there. So it's not to say that you can't do that, but you just have to kind of work on your technique a little bit. Make sure you're going straight forward and back. Um, so some of my favorite blacksmiths are from the Takefu Knife Village. Um, uh, three examples are, are Kurosaki-san. Uh, Shirokamo and and Kato-san, um, three of the three of the blacksmiths that I work with um, f from that region. They're they're pretty amazing, aren't they? That's... So they all they all hand forge their knives using what's called a spring hammer and and a and a, and a forge. So okay. they heat up the steel in, in, in what is essentially a very hot oven, um, pull it out, and they have this uh, giant machine in front of them. Um, runs on like belts and. Um, controlled with a pedal on their foot that controls okay. the hammer and they hammer the steel out, rearranges the, the, the molecules of the steel um, and, and gives it that added edge retention, hardness, durability. Um, they're also all hand sharpened as well and one of the other special things about Japanese knives is their geometry. These are all double beveled. Okay. So I carry primarily double beveled knives. Um, these are Japanese Japanese Western style so knives. So they're hybrid, hybrid in the way they're sharpened. They, they are. So they're okay. sharpened from both sides, angle both sides. I guess I'll, I can run through the shapes real quick here that that we see. So okay. um, on the top here, you've got a petty knife. Yep. Uh, petty knives are just sort of a general purpose. Um, came from the French paring knife when the French went over to Japan, started trading. Yep. Um, it gets the name from being a, a petit knife, small knife, a paring knife, and the Japanese just kind of took that and turned it into petty knife. Yep. Um, next we've got a santoku. This is um, probably the most ap approachable it, knife for a home cook. It's a familiar shape. Very familiar shape, yep. great size as well. A lot of home cooks find this 210 or, or eight inch quintessential chef's knife to be just a little bit too long, too, long, yep. um, too much for them. So this guy coming in at uh, 165 millimeters or, or six, roughly six and a half inches is a very comfortable size okay. for a lot of people. Um, next we've got the Nakiri. Um, vegetable chopper. So yeah. these both of these knives are, are quite versatile. The Santoku a little bit more so just because it has the tip on it. Yep. But if you're a vegetarian or a vegan or you find yourself just using that up and down chopping motion yep. for everything, uh, Nakiri is great. Lots of height on the blade so you've got lots of space for your guide fingers yep. and that they're thereby not shaving off parts of your finger which is nice. Well and, and I, I, that's that's something that a lot of people don't talk about when they talk about knife w knife work and knife technique. Yeah. Is that this is the guide. Oh absolutely yeah, yeah super important. Yeah. Um, yeah if you're not comfortable with your with your knife and your and your fingers being 
connected at all times, uh, you, you're never going to be as, as precise as you yep. could be. Yep. Um, and then finally, we've got a Gyuto, or the Japanese equivalent of a chef's knife. Um, so very similar to, again, very similar shape to a French style chef's yes. knife. A yep. um, little bit of belly to it or, or curve to the blade, but not nearly as much as, as a, a, like a German Henkel or Wusthof that they tend it's to curve really way curved, up, right? Yeah. Um, so what that does is, again, um, give a little bit of ease of use to that, that push and or pull, chopping up and down motion. It's a very comfortable knife. Very comfortable knife. Yeah. And if you've never cut with a Japanese knife the first time you do, it's absolutely amazing. Um, it just feels like it wants to it, go through. It, yes. Um, like that's what it's, that's it's, what it's, it's supposed to do. That's what it's, it's supposed mission. to do yes. and that's what it wants to yes. do. Yeah. Um, and it feels fantastic. And, and it's because the, the weight's forward and the blade pulling the blade through you the shouldn't ingredient. shouldn't be fighting your knife. No. No, a sharp knife is a safe knife. A dull knife is is uh, is dangerous. Yeah, a little bit uh, counterintuitive, um, but like we've been talking about, that precision and accuracy means that you know where your knife is going at all times, and you're not worrying about it slipping off into your fingers or, you know, whatever else that can happen. Um, and if you ever cut yourself with a dull knife, it doesn't heal very it doesn't fast. Doesn't heal very well at all. No, no, no. You cut yourself with a sharp knife, you just smush it back together. You're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of crazy glue and yeah. you're back on the line. Oh yeah, you're ready. You're back you're back in it. So if I was only gonna buy, say, three knives, if I if I wanted to keep my kitchen fairly sparse, sure. three knives, which three would you think? Sorts of noise on me. 